Okay, so next we're going to use recurrence relation to count the number of bit strings of a particular type. And in particular, we want to find a recurrence relation in given initial conditions for, for the number of bit strings of length n without two consecutive zeros. So we want to consider the number of bit strings of length n that do not have repeated zeros in them in, in any case. And then we want to determine how many such bit strings there are of length 5. So recall we defined the length of a bit string simply to be the number of bits within that bit string. So in this case, we want to determine the value of a sub 5 as soon as we develop our recurrence relation a sub n for every integer n greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to let a sub n denote the number of bit strings of length n of this particular type that do not have two consecutive zeros. Okay, and so the first thing we're going to do is split our type of bit strings into two different kinds. So to obtain this recurrence relation, note that the number of bit strings of length n that do not have two consecutive zeros is the same as the number of bit strings, the number, number of such bit strings ending with a zero plus the number of bit strings ending with a 1. So we're going to split um, our count into two different cases. We're going to consider those bit strings without consecutive zeros, which end in a 0, and we're going to consider separately the number of bit strings without two consecutive zeros that end in a 1. This will give us a place to start and a way to develop a recurrence relation. So let's look at the following image. So. The first case we consider is bit strings ending with a zero. So consider that our, we have a bit string with n many bits in it, and it ends in a zero. So notice that we're considering exactly those bit strings that do not have consecutive zeros. So in the case that it ends in a zero, we know that the second last bit must be a one, because otherwise we would have two consecutive zeros in our bit string, and that's not allowed by the type that we are counting. So in this case, we're considering bit strings that end in a zero, and then they must be followed by a one. So now notice that if there are n many bits within this bit string, and we have frozen two of the bits, there are n minus two many bits left, and we also know that there can't be any consecutive zeros within this bit string. So this is a bit string of length n minus 2, and given our definition of our sequence, we know that there are a sub n many n minus 2, many such bit strings of length n minus 2 with no two consecutive zeros. So this tells us that there are a sub n minus 2, many bit strings of length n without two consecutive zeros, ending in a zero. Similarly, if we consider our bit strings with no consecutive zeros ending in a 1, then recall if we freeze the nth term or the nth bit in our bit string, then we know there are n minus 1 many bits left to fill here, and we know that this bit string of length n minus 1 must not contain two consecutive zeros since our bit string of length n must not contain two consecutive zeros. And so we know from our definition of our sequence that there are a sub n minus 1 many bit strings of this form that do not contain two consecutive zeros and end in a 1. So now recall that this is all possible cases. So because bit strings either have zeros and ones as elements in them, we know that such a bit string will either end in a 0 or end in a 1. So this considers all possible bit strings of length n which do not have two consecutive zeros. And so we can simply um, so we can simply establish our recurrence relation as a n equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. So notice that we simply use previous values of our sequence to define our sequence at a n. So that's, remember, what a recurrence relation is. So whenever you're solving problems of this kind, you want to sort of break it down into 
um, smaller cases to determine how we can use those previous values to give us a recurrence relation. Okay, so next we want to establish the initial condition. So we have established our recurrence relation for n, but now notice that we count the previous two terms of the sequence, so that means we need two initial conditions. We need to determine what a1 and a2 are before we can establish what a3 is. Okay, so what are the initial conditions? So we want to consider first what a1 is. So a1 is the number of bit strings of length 1 that doesn't contain two consecutive zeros. Well, since our bit strings only have one bit in them, being of length 1, they have only one bit, there's no possible way we can have consecutive zeros, so we simply count all possible bit strings of length 1, which are, which are either 0 or 1, and so there are two possible bit strings of length 1 that do not have consecutive zeros. And then for a2, we consider all possible bit strings of length 2, which do not have consecutive zeros, and there are 3. So we could start with 0 and add 1. That's a bit string of length 2 without consecutive zeros. We could start with 1 and add 0. That's a bit string of length 2 without consecutive zeros. We could start with 1 and add 1. So these are only possible bit strings of length 2 without consecutive zeros. Notice that if we start with 0, we're not allowed to add the additional 0 because this is a bit string with two consecutive zeros. So this wouldn't count um, in our count for a2, so this is why a2 is 3. Okay, so we have established then a recurrence relation, so a1 is 2, a2 is 3, a3 is then the sum of a1 plus a2, and so on. So recall that we were also asked to determine the number of bit strings of length 5 without two consecutive zeros. So we simply have to determine what a sub 5 is. So recall that we simply add the previous, so our recurrence relation that we discovered simply adds the previous two terms together. So we have a1, a2, so a3 is simply the sum of a2 plus a1, which is 5, and then a4 is the sum of a3 plus a2, so 5 plus 3, which is 8, and so what will a5 be? Simply 8 plus 5, which is 13. And you may notice that this looks very similar to another recurrence relation we talked about, a very famous one known as the Fibonacci sequence. Um, remember that it established that we added the previous two terms together to get the next term in the sequence, um, but just note that we don't start from 1, which is how the Fibonacci sequence started, but we start from the first term in the recurrence relation. So a1 is actually f sub 3, a2 is then f sub 4, and so we actually have that our sequence is similar to the Fibonacci sequence except shifted by 2. So we start at the third element of the Fibonacci sequence and continue to sum previous terms in that way. Okay, so that brings us to the end of applications of recurrence relations to counting problems.